Eight. Scripture lesson today comes out of the book of Galatians. And I believe I said the sixth chapter and verses six, seven, and eight. Is that what I said? Amen. Thank you, thank you for helping the Reverend out today. So I'm going to start at uh, verse six of the sixth chapter. Anyone who receives instructions in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. 
A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. As I've asked you to join me this morning, as my subject is, why is God mocked? Why is God mocked? Let us pray. Father God, we come once again here in your house with a few of your children. And for that, we're grateful. So, Father, we come now praying that the words from my mouth and the meditation from my heart is acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Move our big, heavy Bible out the way, and then we can press on today. What does it mean that God is not mocked? And better yet, that why is God mocked? To mock God is to disrespect, dishonor, and ignore him. It is a serious offense committed by those who have no fear of God, or who deny his existence. The most easily recognized form of mockery is disrespect, typified by verbal assault or other acts of disdain. It is associated with ridicule, ridicule scoffing, and defiance. Mockery is a dishonoring attitude that shows low estimation, contempt, and even open hostility. In the Bible, mockery is a behavior and attitude shown by a fool. We read about that in Psalm 74, 22. And the wicked, Psalms 1 and 1. And the enemy and haters of knowledge. And we say that uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And they say that those who mock God are unteachable. Mockers go beyond mere lack of judgment to making a conscious decision for evil. Mockers are without a spirit of obedience. Mockers are without a spirit of teachability, of discernment, wisdom, worship, and faith. Those who mock God will mock the people of God as well. The prophet Jeremiah became a laughing stock of all the people and was mocked in a song all day long. Mockery of God's prophet was commonplace. Even in, in Second Chronicles, Nehemiah was mocked by his enemies. Ezra was mocked by the youth of Bethel. And of course, the Lord Jesus was mocked. You remember mocked by uh, Herod, mocked by uh, the soldiers. I believe that in the, in the text in Matthew, uh, it says uh, 27, it says uh, 28, and they stripped him and uh, put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they spit on him and on his head. And he read in his right hand, and they bowed uh, their knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smite him on his head. And after that, they mocked him. They took the robe off of him and put on his own remnant of his head and led him away to be crucified. And it says, and they passed uh, and reviled him. These are the, uh, the teachers of the law, the scribes and, par and Pharisees. They, they say they passed him, they reviled him. And they were um, wagging their fingers and heads and, and they were saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and build it in three days, save thyself if you truly are of the Son of God. And then they said, if you, if you thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Come down from the cross and save yourself. He saved others. 
himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down, they said, and we will believe. The text also says that he trusted in God. He trusted in God, so let him deliver himself now. And they said, if he will uh, have him, for he said, I am the son of God. And it said the thieves who were with him cast the same in his teeth. So Jesus Christ was mocked as we know. The text says it's easy for us as believers to point the finger at those outside the church who mock God. But for the most subtle mockery of God and the most dangerous comes from those of us sitting in the church. We are guilty of mockery when we behave with an outward show of spirituality or godliness without an inward engagement or change of heart. Say, ye be transformed. Be transformed. One preacher says that, and he wrote about the effects of mocking God, to mock God is to be, to pretend to love and serve him when we do not, to act in false manner, to be uh, insincere and hypocritical of our profession, pretending to obey him, love him, serve him, and worship him when we do not. Mocking God grieves the Holy Spirit and smears the conscience, and thus the bands of sin become stronger and stronger. The heart becomes gradually hardened by such a process. God warns that mockery is what is, is what is to be punished. Zephaniah predicted the downfall of Moab and Ammon, saying this is what they will get in return of their pride, insulting and mocking the people of God Almighty. Isaiah warns that mockery will cause the chains of Judah's sin to become stronger and that destruction will Proverbs 34 says that God will mock the mockers, but give favor, give favor to the humble and oppressed. Second Kings records the punishment befell the youths, the youths who jeered Isaiah. I'm sorry, Elijah. He said that Elijah called down a curse on them, and two bears came out and mauled 22 of the youth. This is what is meant that God is not mocked. There are repercussions for ignoring God's directive and willfully choosing to sin. Adam and Eve tried and brought sorrow and death unto the world. Ananias and Sophrina, deception, brought a swift and public judgment. You remember them. They're the ones that said that if they got a little extra money, that they would give a portion of it to the church. And then they, they came in, and, and, and then they, I guess, had a change of mind, or something happened to them. And Peter had asked them, well, what is it that, 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 that has caused you to sin against God? He asked the wife, and they said, the wife, she fell dead. And then the husband came in, and, and, asked, and Peter was saying, well, why is it that you have come and insulted God? You didn't have to promise to give the money, but you made a statement saying, I'm going to give a portion of that goodness back to God. The text says that he fell dead, and they drug him out of the church. God cannot be deceived and anchor sin, and in Joshua's fight. We are not unknown to God. Jesus repeated the words to every church in Revelations 2 and 3. I know your works. We only deceive ourselves when we think, when we think, when we think somehow that God does not know what we're doing. The text says he knows our thoughts before we think them, before we think them. And it says God knows the attitudes and actions it says that are, are, are seen by the all-powerful and all-knowing God. God has made us and so he can take us Take us in and take us out. 
He knows us. Well, he made us. The Bible shows us the way to live a blessed life. Sometimes by a good example of godly men and women, and sometimes by negative examples of those who choose to follow another path. And the challenge that we have with God is God said we make up our mind to go another path. We decide that a, a little sin just or won't hurt us. We make it up in our minds that as some in the Bible said, how can God really know? It reminds us of the days when we were children growing up. And we might would tell a, a story or a half lie to our parents. And, and then they would catch us in the lie. And we would say, well, how did they know I was lying? Parents know your ways. Parents know your thoughts. And they can catch you in a lie. And if your parents can do it, then you know that God Almighty, the everlasting, the Alpha and the Omega, who's been here from the end and will be here when we are gone, knows who we are and what we do. But we say in Proverbs chapter 1, 1 and 3, it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in steep with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. But those delight is in that those delight is in the Lord, and who meditates on His law day and night. It says that that person, that person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, it says which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, it says, whatever they do will prosper. So God has given us the playbook. God has given us the mandate that the things that we ought to do if we want to prosper. He says that we ought to meditate on the law a day and night. What that means, we ought to meditate on the Word of God. Allow God to transform us, even in our very lives. And then once we're transformed and we are renewed, then we'll be able to see what God has in store for me and for you. And God reminds us is that you ought to make hay while the sun is shining. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Many times we say, well, I'll get right uh, in a few years. Or I'll get right. I'm, I'm on my way. But we have found that in these lives and we, we literally see that you can be here today and gone tomorrow. Yeah, gone tomorrow. We're seeing that more. It doesn't have to be because of COVID. We just say literally you can be here today and gone tomorrow. If you don't believe it, you just start living just a little while. And then you, every time you get a phone call, it's about somebody being called in or somebody in the hospital room or somebody that had an incident or an accident. And it seems as we get older, it seems like the time speeds up. So you don't want to act like you know when your time is going to come up. In effect, that's mocking God. You don't know. So you want to act like, since you don't know, you'll act like it, and you'll meditate on his word. You'll change the way you, you act, because if you hear the word, it will not only change the way that you act, but change the way that you talk, to change the way that you walk, to change the way that you meditate, change how you fellowship one to another. For the text says that God cannot be mocked. Amen. 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 Now in our service, we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. If there is someone out here today who wants to join the church, we invite you to call us up, email, text us. There is an application even online. But we encourage you to while you're still a breathing, a breath in your body and a song on your lips to join the church. 
as we sing our hymn of invitation. Oh, pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I'm calling out, Savior, Savior, hear my Now time for the sacrament of the Holy Communion. We would ask that uh, for our friends and family at home, that they get their sacraments prepared. We have encouraged you to, to get the, the crackers and whatever uh, liquid that you have, water, juice. Uh, we would uh, uh, encourage you to get prepared now. And of course we have to... Uh, Sanctify and glorify. We have to, for the Reverend, I have to uh, wash my hands. Sanitize it here. I'm ready now. I'm ready. Amen. Let us break bread together. Amen, amen. The bidding now, you that truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to almighty God. General confession, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we bewail and manifold by manifold sin and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent hardly saw for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievance unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets 
are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is very me, right, and our bounded duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same, Lord, whose prophecy is always to have mercy. Grant us Therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and body may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who may thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to each of them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shed for you and for the many for remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in the remembrance of me. The Reverend goes first. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was given to me to preserve my soul and body to everlasting life, I take and eat this in the remembrance that Christ died for me and feed on him in my heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for me to preserve my soul and body to everlasting life, I take and drink this in the remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for me and be thankful. Now the congregation, take your cracker. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for you to preserve your soul and body to everlasting life, Take and eat this, and remember that Christ died for you, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Now the cup, the blood, of our, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for you to preserve your soul and body into everlasting life. Drink this, and remember that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Let us all recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. love of God, which is eternal, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is unearned, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, which is the fulfillment of the promise, rest, rule, abide in you now and forevermore, as all God's children sing together. Oh, my God. 